Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday and happy Father's Day. Okay, if your dad is in the room with you, I want you to stop. I'll pause, don't worry. Look at him and say, Happy Father's Day, Dad. You're the greatest. Okay, and if, he's, isn't, if he isn't in the room, feel free to shout it down the hallway as well. He'll appreciate it either way. Now, if your dad isn't with you for some reason today, for any reason at all, perhaps your parents are divorced, or maybe even your dad has passed away, I just want to say we can still appreciate Father's Day just in a different way. So today we're going to turn to how God is our Father and how we can relate to Him as our Daddy. So let's turn to the Bible now and see how we can learn about God as our Father. Okay guys, so I have drawn us an amazing figure here and we are going to call him Dan the Rad Dad. Okay? So, when we think of God the Father, there's things that we're never going to fully understand until we get to heaven. But we have this beautiful picture of an earthly dad to help us out. And there's a couple of ways that our earthly fathers can imitate our heavenly father. So that's why we're going to use Dan, the rad dad, as an example of some of those things. So one of the first ones is that God is the source of life. So I'm just going to do some like, whoa, power, look at that. And so now our dads cannot create the earth out of nothing. We understand that. But we do have to have a mother and father to be alive. And God the Father is well beyond just you and me and our brothers and sisters. He created everything, the whole world. So God is the creator of all things, the giver of life. All right, so that's number one. Then number two, let's think what this one's gonna be. Ah, this is very important. Dads sometimes have to correct us. So now wait for this amazing stop hand. Is that five fingers? Yes. Okay, imagine that the hand is coming out and saying stop. Now, when we think of correction or discipline, we think of a spank or our TV being taken away for the weekend or our cell phone privileges being revoked. But sometimes a discipline is a stop. Don't do that. It's bad for you. And that is one of the things that God our Father does as well as our, heaven, our human fathers. Sometimes they tell us, don't do that, it's bad for you. What you are doing is not good. So we need to sometimes receive, all the time, receive that instruction from our fathers. Sometimes it's not nice. We don't like to be told that we're doing wrong, but ultimately it's for our good. Like when a dad tells you not to play soccer in the street, it's not because he doesn't love you, it's because he doesn't want you squished, right? So sometimes there are boundaries that our fathers put in place, and it's the same with God. He's given us boundaries that we need to actually see as very loving, from a loving God, all right? So, so far we've got a heavenly father and an earthly father who um, give life and who correct. Here's another one. They give provision. Okay, his thumb's a little bit crazy there, sorry. But here we go. Imagine this is a bag of groceries from pick and pay so just whatever you want in there maybe there's a box of cereal in here maybe there's some fruits and veggies because I know how much you guys love those and there's some milk all right so that's just an idea of provisions for us I was thinking of food but you could also say that your dad provides clothing shelter a house to live in a car to drive to school in he provides your school fees um, so does your mom, but I'm just saying provision is one of the things that fathers do for us. And our Heavenly Father not only just provides us with those things through our earthly dad, but he provides us everything. The air that we breathe, our bodies working, all of these things from God, and they are provision from him. Even right now, I can hear birds, and that's just delightful. And those are things that God created and bring us joy and delight, and he's provided them for us. So that's something that both our earthly dads do. They work and they earn and they take care of us. But even God, our Father, provides for us in this amazing way. All right, so we got that. Here's another one for you. Our earthly fathers and our heavenly Father gives us wisdom or instruction. I'm just going to write wisdom. But think of instruction. So instruction's a bit like being taught, but it's taught wisely with great things 
that we can be taught from God and from our earthly father. So I thought of something funny here. Um, sometimes when our dads do this, they say, when I was a boy, and then you can put whatever, whatever story that your dad used to say. I used to have to walk barefoot to school, uphill both ways, um, and all I had was one potato uh, to eat at lunchtime to keep me warm. Or, I didn't get cheese as a child, or I never got the toys that you guys got. I mean, I'm joking, right? But we've all heard those stories. Um, but then mixed in between some of those stories that are silly and fun to laugh at is real truth and instruction that our parents can give us, especially our dads. So we need to be listening carefully when they tell us things because it is for our good. We can avoid making mistakes and falling into sin if we listen to the things that our fathers tell us. Definitely our Heavenly Father. All right, this is Dan the Awesome Dad, but we're not talking about our Heavenly Father. And the Bible is the way that He's chosen to communicate with us. So if we can stay in the Bible and learn the things that God wants us to learn, then these words of instructions are going to be such a blessing, a sweetness to our souls. So we want to learn from our dads and we want to learn from our Heavenly Father. And then there's one last thing that kind of ties our Heavenly Father and our Earthly Fathers together. And I'm going to put a big heart here. And it's that our Heavenly Father is always, always waiting to welcome us, to welcome us to Him, to wrap us into His arms and to care for us. And our fathers on earth should be the same, always welcome, um, welcoming their children in for a love, for a hug, just to encourage and be a blessing. And I know that many of you know what it's like to just get a real sweet, sincere hug from your dad and just that love that comes from that. And that is a picture for us of God, the love that he shows for us. Um, he's always ready to welcome you in. So this is our picture of a heavenly dad meets a human dad. So we've got Dan the awesome dad and he's shown us some of these ways that we can see God through the everyday living um, of a human dad. But there's one thing that I want to add to this, and that is, there is no one like God. So, you may be thinking to yourself, what if I don't have a father that's in my house that's doing these things? Or sometimes I don't feel um, like I can see God? through the actions of my father, there is no one like God. He is perfect. He is holy. He is just. He doesn't look like this silly cartoon figure. That's just somebody that I drew. But he is perfect. And he is willing to be the perfectly, perfectly good Heavenly Father for both you and for me. All right, so I have one last thing that I want to share with you just to wrap up our lesson that we've had today about fathers. So in your Bible, in the book called Galatians, chapter 4, and it's verse 6. And because you are sons, and we'll stick in daughters there as well, and because you are sons and daughters, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. So you know what's amazing about that? All of those things that we drew on the board about our Heavenly Father and our Heavenly Father, all of those things are available to us as God's children. Now, this isn't for everybody. This is for people who trust and believe in Jesus Christ. He came to earth to save us and we needed saving. You know what lives inside of your heart. It's not always the good, happy, fuzzy, loving feelings that should be there. Sometimes it's mean. I would say most of the times we think mean thoughts. And you really have to fight against that. And that is very much what God came to save us from, our sin that separated us from Him. Now, He could have. He could have saved us from our sins stamped us clean and then walked away but he didn't do that not only did he save us from our sins he then also adopted us into his family so we're not even just like servants in god's um eternal kingdom we are sons with jesus sons and daughters we are right there it's amazing it's a wonderful gift 
And when he did that, he allowed for the Holy Spirit to come and live in believers' hearts. And inside of our hearts, the Holy Spirit is helping us to call out to God, Abba Father, which just means Daddy. So we can speak to God in a way that is so familiar and so loving, and we don't have to be afraid. So I just want you to stop and thank God today for the good things that he has done, namely sending Jesus to die for us on the cross, for saving us, for adopting us as his children. And if that's something that you don't think that you've actually done, you've never asked Jesus into your heart and become a child of God, then I would really encourage you to speak to your parents today. What a lovely Father's Day gift that would be to have that conversation with your parents. One last time, I just want to say that we love you and we care for you. We're praying for you. Make sure that you spoil your earthly dad rotten today. Make the tea, make the coffee, clean up the house, give him the remotes, let him pick what you watch tonight. I know it's self-sacrificial, but you can do it. And just show him how much you care today and how much you appreciate the impact that he's having in your life. See you soon.